but yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah. it's okay. It's all right. I, I think maybe it's got too many colors as usual. That's uh, Cape Street Keyboard, yeah, though, yeah. all these Disney yeah. Keyboards. They tried to stuff as many bits of the world right. in there as they could, I think. They really tried to put all these little references, which I think is admirable. Uh, just maybe it, it's a bit much for some of them. Although I don't mind this one, because it still keeps a simple sort of shape, which offsets some of the high amount of different details in there. I mean, let, let me get this straight now before anyone sort of misunderstands me. There's nothing wrong with detail. I think detail is good. It's when you have a lot of different design elements that can feel a bit over-designed and a bit clustered and just a bit too much. I think you know what I mean. I'm not going to rant on about it. Anyway, you've got the transformation. There's only one for this, but it's the staff, and I really love this transformation. I think it's so unique and it's really cool. I love shooting with the club. It's great, but it looks cool as well. There's a gradient thing going on with the green and yellow, which was also on the keyboard, but the handle elements with the flowers and stuff has kind of become the end of it, the end of the staff, whereas the blade of the keyboard is now the handle of the staff. So that's a cooler version. And if you look into the flower, you can see some pulsing effects. That's cool. Honestly, that's going to be a bit of a broken record today because that's how I feel about a lot of these case three keyboards. Here's another one, Happy Gear. This one actually I have warmed up to a bit. But at first when I saw it, I thought, okay, this is, this is pretty silly. This is a bit nonsense. But I do like the machinery. In parts of it. And it is Monsters Inc. It's Disney, and it's not going to be very serious, especially since they're in the sort of laughter phase of the factory. If they're in the scream phase of the factory, maybe it'll look a little different. In fact, I might like that a bit more. But uh, yeah, it's got all the elements. It's got the factory stuff. It's got the hat. It's got the door. It's got the scream tanks. Hey, it's all there. It's pretty cool. I've warmed up to it a bit, actually. I don't think it's too bad. I think when you look at it close up like this, maybe it seems over designed, but from further away, I think it blends a bit better and it doesn't have too many colors or anything like that so yeah you know not too bad yeah, and when we look at yeah, the transforms yeah, well, we have two talking things to them. we have adult claws yeah. i like the segmented look of this and how sora's hands yeah. actually go into them that's pretty nice yeah. and we also have the yo-yos which <laughs> they really are just yo-yos some people got these uh, i think it was a european thing a promotional thing if you got the game in a pre-order or something but yes they're okay, they're yo-yos, I mean, that's quite inventive for a weapon, using yo-yos to hit people. <laughs> I've never seen it before, so I've got to applaud some inventiveness with that. Alright, moving on to Crystal Snow, the Arendelle themed Keyblade. It's quite simple, actually, and a bit of a twist from the others. It's mostly just her ice palace, with some snowflakes. And then at the bottom there's Olaf and the little sort of frosted branch thing. And I think it's uh, quite a nice design. The only thing I don't really like about it are the little snowflakes on the blade. Because they kind of feel like they're just kind of stuck there. So maybe that could have been done a little differently. But overall I do like this. This is one of my preferred keyblades in this game. For the visuals at least. And its transformations are... Uh, we've got Blizzard Claws, so we've got another set of claws. Uh, these ones are pretty cool. <laughs> they get cool. Uh, but I do like the effect when you move around, you can see the glimmer of the ice, you can see the reflections, quite nice. And then we have Blizzard Blades. These are very nice as well because we have these blades on his wrists, you can see they're on loops there, and also on his ankles as well. So that's quite unique, and it's another cool weapon. Like There's not a whole lot I can say about it because it's mostly just blue ice, but it is nice blue ice. Next up is Honey Spelt. This you get from Hundred Acre Wood. Uh, honey Spelt. <laughs> okay, so I don't really like it, but that's not to say it's bad, because I actually think the design is pretty decent. It's a short keyblade, you know, uh, you may have watched the Cage One video, I don't really like short keyblades. And it's a bunch of honey pots stacked up. And it's, it looks like it's 
made of wood and it's got the bees. It's a hundred acre wood keyblade. <laughs> it's just, I don't like that style of things. But I can see why some people would quite like it, especially if you're a fan of Winnie the Pooh. This one is like Shooting Star, so it's got three Sherlock's and it's got the same transformations, just in a honey theme instead. And actually it can slow enemies, because the honey, I guess, sticks to them and slows them down, which is quite neat. I really like the visuals of when you shoot with this, especially in Arendelle. The yellow contrasted with the blue looks very nice. But yeah, the guns and the launcher, they're like shooting star, but just honey versions but differently shaped. I mean, yeah, honey's pretty nice. I like honey. I like the flowing texture that it has as well. So, they're decent enough. They're just very wacky looking. Mm, I don't know if it's intentional, but I kind of like how on the honey launcher, the big one, part of the end of it looks a bit like a crown. Uh, if it's intentional or not, it's still kind of cool. I like that bit. <laughs> Alright, then we have Nano Gear. This one is the Big Hero 6 Keyblade, so you can see all the design. You've got Baymax's token for the, uh, the token, some Kemble's, or Baymax style wings, and all of that. Uh, and then the face is um, something to do with Hero's brother, I can't quite remember right now, but uh, yeah, you'll know if you know. <laughs> and then the blade itself, more Baymax looking stuff. And then we have the Microbots in the end. And yeah, uh, the blade is good. I don't really like the guard, to be honest. I think that's a bit messy. There's a lot going on there. Yeah, the guard, yeah, it's just a lot of colours. But the blade is quite nice, especially the microbox. And when we get into the transformation of this, it borrows elements from other transformations from other keyblades into its own combo, which is very cool. That's why I'm showing like a whole bunch of different stuff here. The microbox can become different weapons. So you see there's the hammer, you can see those claws, there's yo-yos essentially, and then there's a big fist as well, if you want to fist some harders. So that's really nice. I think it's quite a cool combo. And the fact that he's just holding a bunch of microbots, I like that as well. Also there's a sword, you can see the front one is a sword. So <laughs> yeah, you know, that's pretty good to transform. Профессия мамы самая ценная, ведь за нее платят заботой, улыбками, бесценными моментами, словами первыми, доверием. Быть мамой – это счастье, которое доставляют детки. Пасы доставят все, чтобы счастье было больше. Because now, as you can see, we are in a studio atmosphere. We're not in a remote atmosphere anymore. But then how do we kind of continue to use it? Oh, here it is, my favorite Keyblade in Cage 3, Wheel of Fate. I love this Keyblade, guys. Just look at it, right? So obviously it's a ship's wheel. It's made of wood. You can see the wood texture. It's got ship rigging. It's got sails, although they're down. The guard of it has got... Jack's compass, you see the top of Jack's compass, and then the skull with the bandana, and then also the guard is meant to look like Davy Jones' chest, right? The dead man's chest, and the key to the chest is the token, and there's a few skulls there as well. It's a really lovely looking keyblade in my opinion. I don't know if everyone likes it. Maybe the rigging could pick people off. I could kind of understand that. You could probably do away with the rigging, and it would still look good. Uh, maybe that makes it a bit too wide, but I don't mind it. It just, it keeps consistent. This is what I love about it. It keeps consistent between the guard and the blade. And the colors are quite muted, which is good for me personally. But, you know, little elements of gold and punctuations of red and white for the key and the skulls. Yeah, it's just great. It's my favorite key blade in this game. Even above oblivion, and we'll get to that later. And then if that wasn't enough, 
Oh, Transformation no, circle as well. Oh, you first have the spear, yeah. high wind. Yeah. I guess it's a spear, or I don't know what weapon it is, I'm no expert. Oh, yeah. Weapon types. We've got so many different names for yeah. things to kill each other with. Yeah. But yeah, it's like the compass is at the end of the blade, with the wheel around it. And I really like the point of the blade as well. And then other parts of the Caribbean themed elements. And I really like parts of the Caribbean. Well, I mean, I like the first three of them. <laughs> I just pretend four and five don't exist most of the time. But we had a kind of, eh, we had a really meh Pirates of Caribbean Keyblade in Cage 2 with Follow the Wind. It didn't look that great. This makes up for it so much. And then the other transform is a flag. You're fighting with a flag, dude. That's so cool. Like, there's just this cool red flag. I like it a lot. I love how tattered the flag itself is and how it's got dirt on it to keep it that rugged style of the Caribbean. And there's even a mod that changes this into various pride flags, so that's pretty cool too. Alright, from a Keyblade I love to a Keyblade I really don't like, and that's Starlight. It's very simple, and simple can be good and it can be bad, and I think this is more of the bad case. Kind of like some of Cage 1's simple Keyblades, which looked a little bit weak, you know? I kind of like the chunkiness that Cage 3 has, I don't think the chunkiness of the Keyblades is my problem. I think it's more just some of the over-designed bits. This is simple, but kind of boring, and it just looks thin, and it, I don't know, it just looks like a worse Kingdom Key. It's just a star on the end, right? And, and, and yeah, and there's blue for the guard. Okay, that's great. That's, that's Starlight. It goes into second form S, and it has a different finisher from the other second forms, so that's a bit more unique. It's probably the most interesting second form because of the fact it's got a different finisher. You get this late on in the game, but some people got it early because they played the classic Kingdom games where they put in Union Cross for a limited time and you had to get certain high scores and then you get this and then you find out that you actually get this in the game anyway. Uh, so I feel really bad for the people who did those requirements even before they were halved as well. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be laughing at it, but <laughs> show up and forward it. It's a little bit funny. <laughs> Ratatouille is my favourite Pixar movie, I love it, I think it's just a masterpiece of animation and film. Uh, but this Keyblade is pretty ugly. <laughs> now, you get this from getting 5 stars in the bistro, and it makes sense what it is. It's the token at the top, and then you've got the symbol that they use from the new restaurant at the end of Ratatouille. A set of cutlery, the Eiffel Tower, a couple of wine bottles, and then Gusteau's book at the bottom. Oh yeah, and the handle is like a corkscrew, like sort of uncork wine. It looks very annoying to hold though, <laughs> like that would do your hands in, right? I mean you just get marks on your hands from holding that. It doesn't look very comfortable. This whole Keyblade, I think it's just like, yeah I can see what they're trying to do and they do do what they're trying to do, 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 but I don't think it's very nice to look at. It's pretty ugly, I don't really like using it. It's Transform is a version of Counter Shield, but this time it's Frying Pan, although it's got a better finisher and the Frying Pan itself looks pretty cool. I just find it kind of funny how a Frying Pan has a handle Yet Sora's holding a different handle, because it's a shield. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. It's got two handles. <laughs> and in classic tone, this keyboard you get from doing the classic Kingdom minigames. You don't have to set a specific high score, you just have to make a high score on each. So you can just go through, get a score, and then die. Now, the look of it, it's just not my style. It's obviously a classic Disney... A bit of Steamboat Willy thing going on there. I don't like the guard at all, like the cock and everything. I mean, or I'm just thinking back to Wishing Star, it's not good. The blade is a bit better, but it still looks very flimsy. Uh, and then the hand holding the trumpets, or oh, well, whatever that is, you know, one of those squeezy horns at the end. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the transforms are a bit better though. It's a copycat of Favourite Deputy with the transforms. Uh, they still look like, they've got loads of colours, they still look very childish. And that's what they're supposed to be, they're classic Disney cartoons for children. So I don't particularly like them, but uh, I guess they're a bit better. The hammer at least, I think the hammer's the most palatable one for me. Okay, now on to another Keyblade I really, really like. It's Ultima Weapon. We've seen Ultima Weapon in the first game. It was yellow, it had one blade. We saw it in Cage 2, it was blue and it had two blades. It is also in PBS and DVD, but I haven't covered those yet. 
But in cage three, here it is, and it's got three blades, you can see that. It's going to get a little bit confusing when we get to cage four, isn't it? This is my favorite version of Ultima. It can be seen as potentially a bit busy with the design. There is a lot going on, a lot of spikes. But I think it looks pretty classy, and it stays very consistent. It's not like there's a bunch of different elements. The elements work together well, I think. So while not everyone might like this, I really enjoy this. It's my favorite version. Not just because of how cool it looks, it's generally just look at all these spikes and it's got silver and grey and then red and sort of sparkly effect. But red and silver or red and white, that's always a colour combination that I really, I really like that. And then, yeah, you see the token is the heart once again, a little bit more special this time around, but it's the same sort of heart. You've got the elongated heart at the base of the blade as well. So a lot of the same stuff's carried over from previous games. It's kind of the most glorious looking Ultima of all of them, right? With Ultima form, Sora gets some white and black clothes that are a little bit familiar to Final Form from Cage 2. The Ultima weapon itself changes into this long sword, and it's extremely simple. It's just a sword that's kind of prismatic, it's got all these colours flowing across it. It looks really nice. I really like this. I like the simplicity of it, because it feels like THE sword. It is just the sword. It's it's the ultimate sword. It's, it's not like it's over the top, and you could say, well, if the keyblade looks over the top, I know, I know, I know. But, look, yeah, I think you get what I mean, right? I don't know how to explain myself completely. I just love the look of this glowing sword, which kind of feels fundamental, in a way. Plus, the effect has lots of other swords coming in and stuff. It's, it's very cool. It's a shame Ultima doesn't really have much lore or anything about it, because it's just a keychain that gets synced, you know? Because I can just imagine some really deep lore if this was a weapon in a Dark Souls game or something. Granted, it'd probably look a lot less uh, pretty. Now we get into... Yeah. It's a DLC territory, and the first of these is our good friend Oathkeeper. Back again, the design is pretty much the same as Cage 2. It's like it's taking all the cues from that, just making it look a bit more updated. However, there is one thing. The teeth. The teeth have changed a little bit. They've kind of got a, I don't know, a slightly fleur de ish but just a more curly tip to the ends of it. I guess it looks a bit more like a plant. I don't know. I, I, I don't really care for that, but it's just a very small detail. Otherwise, yeah, it's just like a Cage 2 version. Now, Oathkeeper lets you go into light form, and this doesn't change the weapon, it just changes Sora's clothes and his abilities. And his counterpart is Dark Form. It's got the kanji for light, just like the teeth on the clothes here. It's got it on the hood as well. You know, I'm not going to go into this too much because that's about clothes, and I'm here to talk about weapons. But I just thought I'd show that quickly. It also has Double Form OKP as an Oathkeeper. This is the Oathkeeper version of Double Form, but they're both the same. It doesn't change which keyblade's in which hand if you use Oblivion, which I thought was kind of weird. Like, why is Oblivion in the left hand for both? I don't know, it just is. Then, of course, we have the counterpart Oblivion. Oblivion in this game, I feel like it's functionally the best, because it has a really cool transform, Dark Form, and you can upgrade the stats, you don't have to worry about it being weak in magic. So it's better than it was in Cage 1 and 2 in terms of mechanics and how much you can use it. It doesn't feel so useless. Unfortunately, I think the design is the weakest of the three. And one reason for that is because it's less black, it's not as dark, it's a bit more sort of grayish purple. And also, as you can probably see if you know Oblivion pretty well, on the blade has a chain running through it, but this time, there's actually gaps between the chain. It's not just a chain on an actual solid metal. There's gaps between it, so it's a chain in the middle. I don't really like that, personally. I think that makes it look a little bit weaker in design. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of that. The guard is still good, and it's nice to see the gem at the center of the guard there. It's nice to see that looking quite nice and shiny and fancy. And yeah, dark form is just like light form, but uh, instead we have the kanji for darkness on his clothes, and it's much more dark themed. Okay, so now we're on to the Kingdom Key copycats. I call them that not because they look like Kingdom Key, although well, two of them kind of do, but actually just because they go into second form and they have the same base and max stats, right? They have the plus four, plus four, plus nine, plus nine. The first of those is Dawn of Dusk. So this is obviously a star cluster recolor, but I, uh, okay. This is my least favorite keyblade in the game. It's just the colors, orange and green. 
are really ugly to me. They don't look good together at all. It looks really cheap, which I suppose is fitting because it's a Keyblade based on a convenience store, 7-Eleven, and it just looks really cheap. And the idea of a Keyblade that's themed around a convenience store seems like the cheapest thing ever to me. That's just, that's just kind of bad. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> you can buy it on the stores, you could get it if you pre ordered on Amazon, at least in the US, not here. But it's on the Microsoft and Sony stores. It looks ugly, I don't like it at all, I think it just looks bad. Um, not everyone might agree with that, but that's opinions for you. Oh yeah, and it's got second form D, and one of the abilities is Fire Boost. And that's a bit of a theming trend that will go on into the next two Keyblades as well. Now we go on to a pair of Star Seeker retextures. Yeah, hey, remember Star Seeker from Cage 2? Well, it gets another life here with these two keyblades. First up is Midnight Blue, mm -hmm. and this is a PlayStation themed keyblade that obviously you can only get on PlayStation. It looks nice, I like it actually. It keeps the very consistent blue and silver theme with a little gold highlight for the star there. And it's got Cyclone X on one side and Triangle Square on the other side, of course. And I like the glittery effect of it. It's quite simple, it's Star Seeker. But I like it even more than Star Seeker, I think, to be honest. I just think it's quite nice looking. This one has Blizzard Boost and Blizzard because it's blue, so Blizzard theme, that makes sense. And it has second form M for Midnight. Counterparts a bit like blue, and that's Phantom Green. Obviously, this is the Xbox version of Star Seeker. This one, I think, it isn't quite as consistent as Midnight Blue, but I still really like it because I really love the color of green that they've used. I like the silver blade and the green sparkles at the end. Like I said, I'm not sure it consistently flows as well as a design as the PlayStation equivalent, and that's kind of the reason because I prefer Xbox now on PC Gamer. But anyway, instead of the buttons being on the guard, Instead we have colours on the keychain, you can see down there, red, green and blue. That's for the B button, the A button and the X button. And then we also have yellow for Y, that's just throughout the design anyway. And then this one is Thunder Theme, so we round out the little trio of elements. Midnight Blue is a literal shade of blue, I'm not sure there is such a thing as Phantom Green. Let me do a quick Google. Wait, no, I was wrong, there is such a thing as Phantom Green. But then there's probably all sorts of colours on there. Phantom Green, but then there's probably all sorts of colours on there. <laughs> Finally, we have Elemental Encoder, the newest Cage 3 Keyblade that there is. This is because this is the PC exclusive Keyblade you get for getting on it at the Game Store, which is the only place you can get Cage 3 on PC at the moment, anyway. It's Epic Game Store themed because it's grey. Yeah, Epic Game Store.
обоснованный кончик, ну скажем, обоснованный.
sebentar
Кондёха, кондёха, Да, не такой. Да,
Ugh. <sighs> Так, что мы имеем? 